Hi, I'm Rick from Marin for Models, UK DJI dealer. And this is our what's in the box and setup video for the new DJI Phantom Vision Plus. So the first thing, obviously, is the actual model itself. Now this is the tried and tested Phantom 2, but now comes with its own DJI proprietary 3-axis gimbal and HD camera. You have the 5.8 gigahertz controller. This comes with the phone mount for iPhone or Android phone. You have a Wi-Fi extender here as the video streaming technology is Wi-Fi and this is what extends it beyond the normal 100 meters of Wi-Fi range. Accessories, you get your charger here. This will come with UK and other country adapters. You have an accessory pack, which will have tools, spare screws, etc. in them. You have a propeller pack. In here you'll have two full sets of propellers. So you've got a full set of flying props and you've got a full set of spare props. Here you have the manual, which will include things like getting started guides, etc. Um, there's a few other information packs on flying, etc. I'm going to go through the accessory packs that come with the model. First one is the pack that it contains the manuals. Just open that up. Now, in our supplied ones, uh, you start off with a pack, which will include a sheet here. And on this sheet, we have links to the various Facebook groups, RC groups, where you can get a lot of extra help. There's also a few do's and don'ts, etc. a few things we've added on. It's also got our out of hours email support up to 10.30, seven days a week, uh, and a few other bits and bobs. Flicking over, this is the an extract of the CAA air navigation order. So for those who are flying in the UK, uh, other countries I'm sure will have similar rules, but it just gives you a basic outline of how and where and what where not to fly your UAV, things like restrictions on how high you can go, how far you should be from people and buildings, etc. So certainly worth a look. Next up, you get two additional stickers. Now the Phantom comes with the sticker set already fitted, but you get two additional uh, sticker sets. So blue, obviously, if you're a boy, and pink if you're a girl. Now, it comes with a quick start guide, so this gives you the basic things for getting started as quick as possible if you're a bloke and don't want to get into reading all the instructions in depth, so you have that. This is also included in various languages. Next up, you've got the DJI Disclaimer booklet, so well worth a look at there. It just explains about disclaimer and warranties. Then there's the, this is actually a very good book that DJI have started doing, it's the Phantom Pilot Training Guide. In this you'll have all the various things about, uh, you know, how the model should fly, what the controls do, etc. It's well worth a look. If you're not used to flying radio control models, you might not know what the various sticks do. Uh, it's also got a few do's and don'ts and where you should and should not fly, so definitely worth a, a look through. Uh, it's also got some basic training stuff, so... Uh, it kind of teaches you how to go about teaching yourself to be a better flyer. That again is a various in different languages. Um, and lastly, normally you would normally have to download this, but DJI thankfully are now starting to include the full manual. So have a good look through that. There's lots of information in it. I find a lot of the inquiries and phone calls that we get are generally all answered from here. Now, normally you obviously have to download this or look at it on your, at it on your computer, but now, of course, you can actually take it with you and just have a good reference guide. A lot of useful stuff, especially there's been a lot of new firmware updates and the way things work. It also explains how the app actually works as well for the iPhone. Next item is the charger or power supply. Now, this comes with uh, various adapters. It comes with a two pin, this is a UK adapter, but you get various other adapters for different countries. Obviously, power supply there. This is a special proprietary connector specifically for the Phantom battery. Uh, we'll go into this in more detail when I show you what you have to charge. Next two packs, fairly obvious stuff. This is a small accessory pack. So in here you have a, a small bag. In here you've got uh, basically extra rubbers, 
Uh, there's a tool for taking the props off, although they're self-tightening props, you don't really need this, but it's tools for taking them off. There's also spare anti-drop screws. These are the small plastic screws that stop the gimbal dropping off the model altogether in an event of a heavy landing. They're very handy, so you've got spare ones there. And a few other spare nuts and bolts. And of course, this is your propeller pack. So in here, as I said before, you have two full sets of props. Let's pull them out. So you have a full flying set. Now on the Phantom, you have two left hand and two right hand propellers. So they're indicated by these different colored prop nuts. So you've got a full flying set and you've also got a full spare set. The set also comes with a set of uh, four AA batteries there for the transmitter. A simple thing, but you could easily just not have any lying around or maybe you've not got a good set. And if you fly on a bad set of batteries, you'll just end up triggering the fail safe because it'll lose connection with the model. Now, the first thing you need to do before we even get started is you have to charge the battery. So the first thing to do when you get your Phantom out, you need to remove the special smart battery. Now there are two clips, there's one on the top there's also one on the bottom Oops. and we need to pinch them together. Now it is a tight fit so you do need a good pinch and pull and the battery comes out. Now to charge the battery this is your power supply here and there is this special clip as I showed you before and then if you look closely on the battery that is basically where it's going to go so it can only go in one way but basically you just slide it in like that and that is basically the battery now on charge. Now the next thing you need to charge is the actual Wi-Fi extender on the transmitter. Now the transmitter is powered by the AA batteries that I showed you earlier, but the Wi-Fi extender is rechargeable. Now there's a small uh, USB socket in the side here, and the kit is supplied with a st fairly standard USB charging lead. So it's just a simple case of plugging into the Wi-Fi extender, you'll see the power light coming on and then that's you off charging. Now the next thing we need to do is to prepare the Phantom for flight. So the first thing we need to do is to remove the small card indicators. These are just warning indicators to make sure that you've read the instructions before you fly. And then it's basically we need to put the propellers on. Now the propellers are indicated by colour. You'll notice that one has a silver dot and you'll notice that the propellers, some have a black dot and some have a silver dot. Simple as, black dot, use the black propeller. Now, just put it on and spin it down. You do not need to tighten it up, that is it. If you try to put the wrong prop on the wrong motor, it just simply doesn't work. Now that's the propellers on. The next thing we need to do is we need to prepare the camera itself. Now, in transit, the camera actually has a protective plastic fitting on it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove that from the gimbal, and this will allow the camera to move. There's also a protective cover over the lens as well, which also needs to be removed. That is a little bit tight. And then now it is now, the camera is now fully balanced and ready to be powered up and switched on. Now just a word of warning, if you're ever requiring to turn the model on inside or that you're going to work on it, always take the props off. It's simple as just holding the motor, turning the opposite away and the prop comes off. Never be tempted to turn it on within hand's reach with the propellers on as these are very sharp and you will get cut. Next we need to install the batteries in the transmitter. So simply open the back cover, making sure you realise the polarity so the flat end of the battery goes towards the springs. And then you have one the opposing way, back the opposing way, and then finally back that way and reinstall the door. 
Now next we're going to bind up the camera to the Wi-Fi extender and show you how the app works. Now first of all you'll notice I have removed the props because we are going to be turning the phantom on at this point. So uh, first thing is we need to turn the phantom on. This is quite a simple procedure. The button at the back, this is the power button and this is your battery indicator. So if you just want to check what power is in the phantom, just push it once and we have a full charge battery. As you'll notice, you got four green lights there. Now to actually turn it on fully, you push it once quickly and then within two seconds, push it again. So push it once and then push it again and hold. And that's it powering up. Now the next thing we need to do is to turn the Wi-Fi extender on. Simply do this by flicking the switch on the side and you'll now notice the power light goes to green. Now the next thing we need to do is to uh, show you how to use the app. Now obviously the first thing you'll need to have done is download the actual Phantom Vision app. But before you fire the app up, what we need to do, you need to go to the settings on your phone, click on settings, okay and then what you're looking for is you'll notice on the uh, Wi-Fi networks you will actually see one that's called Phantom so you need to click on that and now the phone is connected to the Wi-Fi extender so now we can close that screen down flick through to the Phantom Vision app push the button and you will now see we're now connected now on these controls, it's difficult, get a lot of reflection. <laughs> now, now that we've got the camera all linked up and working, the first thing you need to do before you fly your Phantom is you need to calibrate the compass. So at the moment we have the transmitter switched on and we have the model switched on. You can see the back lights are just flashing yellow. Now the first thing we need to do is put it into compass calibration mode. Now what we do is the S1 toggle switch, you need, that to you need to toggle that 10 times. And then the rear lights, as I'm showing with my hands, will go solid yellow. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now up to that point you'll find that now the back lights are solid yellow. Now, what we need to do is we need to rotate the aircraft 360 degrees. So we just turn that round and then the back lights will then go solid green. So when I put my hand under, we have now got a solid green light. The next thing we need to do is we need to turn the model on its nose. Now the way the camera faces, it's facing that way, that is the nose. So we tilt it onto its nose, you can now see the solid green lights. We turn around them, the craft round until these lights start flashing. And that's them now flashing. And that's the model fully calibrated. Now, although I'm doing it inside a studio, it's very important that you do not do this. This is something you do outside in a wide open field. Because this is there has to be no magnetic forces around nothing metal, nothing that could interfere with the compass, otherwise it won't calibrate properly and it certainly won't fly properly. Now the model's all calibrated, you're now ready to fly. So first of all, I'm just going to show you a few of the basic controls. Now if the card is still on your transmitter, these will actually tell you what everything does. It's very simple controls. This is your direction control. So here we have forward, so that is forward, the craft will if pointing by its nose will fly forward, that will back it up back towards you, that will make the model slip sideways to the left and slip sideways to the right. This control here is your throttle and direction control, so that will gain altitude, that will be hover and that will decrease altitude and then you will have turn to the right and turn to the left. Now, uh, so you don't have any accidents, simply by pushing the throttle stick forward will not make the motors run. They have to be armed first. Now, this is done by a combination of the two controls 
in an appropriate direction. And the direction is pulling them back and to the middle for a second and then the motors will fire up. Now it won't fly, they will just simply start idling. But if you keep an eye on that motor, you'll see it spin up when I push both sticks back centre and that's it now running. And then the way it will work is if I increase this throttle, you hear the models increasing in power, let go and that would be hover and that would be decrease. And then basically to land the model you just slowly decrease the power, it will slowly come down and then when it's on the ground you just pull the stick all the way back and hold it and the motor's cut. Now other controls I wanted to touch on are these two shoulder switches here. These are actually, by default, they're actually unenabled so that you don't accidentally flick them in flight and then the model do something you don't want it to do. So the first one is actually the GPS control, that's this one here. Now the model's locked into GPS mode until you unlock it. How you unlock it, if you check out the instructions, it'll explain that what you'll need to do is you'll need to go onto the Phantom website uh, and download the Phantom Assistant software and this will allow you to make these changes and enable these switches. But to quickly go over them, once activated, this would be you're in your GPS mode. So that would hold the models, hold the model level, hold its height and hold its position. So if you let go of the controls, the wind won't blow it away. It will just stay stable within about sort of a meter and a meter and a half square. Going to next one down, that is attitude mode. So that will retain its height, will keep the model level, but you won't have the location lock. So the model would drift with the wind. Now this is quite popular for things like videoing where you actually want a more sort of skiddy glidey shot so when you let go of the controls the model won't instantly stop. Now the bottom position is customizable you can either have that as a fail safe position so if you flick it all the way down the model will rise up to 60 feet fly home and then land again or you can actually have that going into manual mode. On this switch here you have your uh, this is your orientation control switch. So that is in the off position away from you. And what orientation control is, is regardless of the direction the model is facing, that will still be away from you, that will be back towards yourself, that will go to the right, that will go to the left. So regardless of what way it's pointing, all the controls will still work as it. Next one down, all the way down, sorry, you have your home lock. Now what that is, is when into home lock position, again, regardless of what way around the model is, if you pull this stick back, the model will fly back home. This is a good one for if you don't, if you get too, quite far away from yourself, you can't see what way around the model is, you, do, you don't wanna do a full blown fail safe situation as in rising the model up and then it flying back itself. You just simply wanna bring it home, all the way down will get your home lock, pull the stick towards you and the model will fly back and then when you realize what way round it is you can simply switch it off and then take control of it again. Now before you fly your model for the first time it's important that you know what all the warning lights on the Phantom 2 do before you take off otherwise you can take off in the wrong mode and it simply won't fly properly. So it's worth looking at the card on the transmitter and familiarize yourself with all the color indicators. But we'll go through the basic ones with you. Now the first thing we need to do of course is switch the transmitter on, turn the transmitter on, turn the model on and then the first lights that we will have is the warm-up light so you'll have a, a red, green, yellow flashing light and then once that's done that it goes into warming up which is a green and yellow light and then while it's waiting on a GPS lock you will get a flashing yellow light. Now, as we're indoors, we're simply not going to get a green light because we won't get a GPS lock inside. So that would continue to flash yellow. But eventually what will happen, once it gets six plus satellites, you will get a flashing green light. Now, before you fly, it's important that you wait for the model to get its home lock position. Now, how you know it's got this is you will get a rapid flashing green light. It'll flash rapidly for about 20 times. It's important you get that before you take off because that is the model getting its home location. So you'll know that if there's a fail safe situation, the model will know where to return to or if you're using any of the 
orientation controls like the course lock or the home lock, the model will know where to, uh, what direction home is, and then that way it will work properly. So very important you wait for green flashing light only, and then for a rapid flashing green light for about 20 pulses, and then basically you're ready to fly. Now here's another tip for FC40 Phantom Vision and Phantom Vision Plus owners. The, as, as the radios come from the factory, they're actually in CE mode. Now this limits the power output of the transmitter and limits you to a range of 300 meters. Now this can be increased to 500 meters by changing it to the FCC mode. Now to do this, if you turn your transmitter over, you'll see two holes on the back of the transmitter. The bottom hole is the adjustment to change it to FCC mode. So using a small flat blade screwdriver, put it in the hole just lightly and turn it until you feel it locking into a pot. That's it locked in. Now just simply turn it clockwise till it stops and that is you now in FCC mode. Now the way to know it's in FCC mode Normally when you turn on the transmitter, it will make one bleep and the light will go green. Now when you turn it on, you get two beeps and that now means it's in FCC mode and you're good for a 500 meter range. Now I hope you enjoyed my very basic what's in the box and quick setup video for the new Phantom 2 Vision Plus. And I uh, hope you uh, can go out there and have some fun and take some great footage. If you've got any questions, uh, just pile it into the comments box. If you like the videos that I'm making, then give us a thumbs up and um, share them with your friends on Facebook. And uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Marionville Multirotors. Cheers and bye.